Hi, um, my name is Daniel. I am a geospatial podcaster, one of the few. And you might look at me and think, oh, geospatial background, charming New Zealand accent, a face for radio, podcasting, of course. It makes perfect sense, right? But the truth is, I haven't always been a geospatial podcaster. These AI-created images up here show some of the stuff I've tried before. I've sold maps online. We had an e-commerce store. Before Mapscaping was a podcast, it was an e-commerce store. We were selling maps. Um, sold geospatial content as a service. <laughs> so written content, blog posts, that kind of thing. I have sold maps. Uh, not maps, sorry, socks. Made a bunch of socks. Socks are an awesome e-commerce product if you're looking for an idea. Um, it costs like a dollar to get made. You've got a high value. You can sell them for about $16. Um, they're light. They're easy to pack. They fit everyone. They are brilliant. Uh, I've been an influencer. That picture over there of the lady, that's what AI thinks an influencer looks like. I've done that too. I built some large um, social media followings and then kind of sold myself for money. It was a really interesting experience. <laughs> and if you want to know how social media actually works, it's you just dive in and play around with it. An uh, interesting experience. I have brought... <laughs> This is game cameras, you know those cameras that set up in the wild and you see animals going past and takes pictures of it? So I brought, imported them from China and sold them in Denmark. Uh, there was an arbitrage there that I just took advantage of and tried it out. Again, interesting experience. We had a project with magnets also importing from China and making products that stick on children's backpacks that um, you know, are reflective. I thought it would be a fun idea. You know, they could, instead of ruining their clothes, they could put a magnet on the inside, put a magnet on the outside. It would be interchangeable fun. Yeah. Interesting stuff, I think, anyway. But what works now is is uh, podcasting, because that's what I've done. Um, Mapscaping podcast. So I make money through podcasting. We sell ads on our podcast, but I prefer to work with, with people. Uh, I prefer to work with businesses. And then my model is they pay me. I help them create some content that people will actually care about. So we create the content with them, and we have the distribution built in. Most models for, for this kind of stuff are advertising based. So it's all, it's all numbers based and you get a very low, yeah, it, it's really hard to make money on this. But people will approach you and say, well, the standard way of doing things is, is like this. It, it doesn't have to be like that. So this is all about, th th this talk is all about geospatial side hustles. It's about ideas. It's about looking around for recipes that are working in the world today. But it could just as easily be a talk about how to fund your next project how to make a little bit of money on the side. It could just as easily be a talk about how to make your ideas spread. Um, so let's talk about selling maps online. I've tried it. it. It works. You'll see plenty of examples of people doing this. This is a person who goes by the, the, the tag uh, Python Maps. You can find them on Twitter. Makes amazing maps and sells them online. He sells them in a place called Etsy. So if you want to try this, go to Etsy and see what's working. You find a store, you do a search in there, what bubbles up to the top? What is it selling for? How many have they sold? They show numbers in there. It's an awesome research platform. And if you're thinking about doing this, you should go there first. You can check out the competition. What are people buying? What are people like? You know, it's a great place to start. And then start thinking about, well, what is it that you can do there? And I, I've said this in, in other talks before, I say it again here. The key with stuff like this is not to make something for everyone. Don't go and make another map of the world. There's too much competition. Make a map of the Appalachian Trail for people that are walking the Appalachian Trail. Do that. Find people that care about something and then make something for those people. This is the way it works. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, go to Etsy. Uh, it's a research platform more than anything else. You can just start your own shop there. They have a bunch of buyers. You have a product to sell. Start there. Again, this could be a side hustle for yourself. It could be a way of funding the project that you're working on. You're all very, very talented people. You have access to tools and data. You just don't have the distribution. Here is the distribution. Um, and you might be thinking, ah, I don't want to print my own stuff. I don't want to order a million T-shirts with the world map on it and then hope I can sell them. I don't want to do that with socks either. I don't want to do that with posters. There's a thing in the world called print on demand. This plugs into the back of Etsy. It plugs into the back of other platforms like Shopify. If you want to run your own brand, if you have a domain name, you can do it there too. The way it works, the customer orders something. It doesn't exist in the world until they order it. It gets sent to a print-on-demand service. They stamp it out. They put your brand on it, and they send it off to somebody else. You are just the front end for this. Again, like, wh wh why, can why can't GDAL fund itself by doing something like this? Why can't Leaflet fund itself by doing something like this? I'm not saying it's the only answer, but it's an interesting concept. What project are you working on? Are you doing something with some beautiful data? It doesn't always have to be serious. Could you make it fun? And could you sell something like this? 
and you don't need a back end for this. You just need people that care to make something for them. Selling maps in person. <laughs> this is terrifying. You're sitting in front of someone saying, here, I made this, would you like to buy it? <laughs> I've done this. You learn a ton about your customers. Go out and meet the people that are using your software, using your project, using your applications that want to buy your maps, and they'll give you some pretty honest feedback. They'll either buy it or they won't buy it for the first thing. They'll either use it or they won't use it, and you'll get a lot of feedback. Like, what are they looking for? What are th we talk about barriers to entry all the time. Um, so one of the barriers to entry to selling somebody a map that they hang on the wall is they already have stuff on the walls because they've had the house for the last 20 years. What is it exactly that they're going to take down to replace with your thing? How is it better? It needs to be like 20 times better than whatever they've got at the moment for them to make that effort. This is the same with your software products. They're already using that thing. There's structural inertia there in the organization. It's difficult for them to move on. Same thing with selling maps. Oh, they need to get a frame. Mm, that sucks. We're all have busy life. No one wants to go and buy a frame to put your map in it to hang it on the wall. You understand where I'm going here? It's really interesting talking with people, talking with them, figuring out what it is they want, what they don't want, why they're not doing the thing you would like them to do. Uh, the next side hustle thingy that I've tried is freelancing. So there's a platform called Upwork. It's an awesome way of finding people. You it's difficult to find the right people. It's always difficult to find the right people, but if you're a project you need to get up and running quickly, this is a great place to start. And it's also a great place to start if you want freelancing experience. Instead of coming out of university and waiting to be picked, you could just go on there and start working. And sure, you probably won't make a billion dollars working there, but you'll gain a lot of experience. It'll look amazing on your CV, and it's a way of get going, getting getting moving, trying something different. It's a way of like taking your future into your own hands, not waiting to be picked by someone else and say, yeah, you can do the thing. You can just go and do the thing here. Uh, I've done this a bunch. I've worked on there before I got a job in Denmark, working for a company called Dong. It's another story. And I worked here. And they looked at my CV and said, oh, look, you're already doing something. Oh, you're, you're on the way. You're in motion. Great. And I was ahead of other people. And uh, I've also hired a bunch of freelancers off here to do different things, to create content for me, to help me out with my WordPress website. Um, I've, <laughs> at one stage, I created an agency on there because you can, just, you can just be an agency and connect the dots. Someone needs something done, you can be an agency, and the people on Upwork actually do the task. As long as you deliver the end result, no one really cares. It's, a, it's an interesting platform. The mistake a lot of freelancers make on here is they, they don't get back to you. When I'm hiring someone on Upwork, I write, a series of emails to them uh, and it takes about a week and a half and what I'm really looking for is are they still there in a week and a half if they are great let's move forward with something because they're already you know way ahead of most of the other people um, but if you're looking for help with your projects if you're looking to do some work yourself gain some practical experience I is a great place to start there's another thing called Fiverr it's the same idea Fiverr.com go on there and people are selling they're not they don't leave anything up to the imagination. Like, I will do this for you. This is the gig that I do for you. Um, also, it's an awesome place to do research again. Like, what's, what's working? What are people buying? What are they wanting out here? Um, you can do research on these platforms as well, figure out what people want, what skills are important to them. Um, yeah, I, they're interesting places, and I don't think that they're, they're utilized enough. I think, in, in my opinion anyway, people are still waiting to be picked by, by organizations before they can do the work that they want to do. That This is a good way of, of starting and of gaining that experience that, that might be extremely valuable to you. One more thing about freelancing. Have a portfolio. Show people your work. It's, every every um, I've published a couple of podcast episodes now with people that have done a lot of hiring. I always ask them, if there's a link in that CV to my portfolio, will you click it? They all say yes. I will click it. I will look at it. Automatically, you're getting 5, 10, 15 minutes more with that person who's making a decision about your future. Portfolios are really important. You should show your work. That's not the way it should be. <laughs> It should be something else. Um, SaaS. We all think about SaaS as big enterprise uh, solutions, and everybody's desperate to, you know, do something incredible. And we're a platform. They could be really, really small. This. Can you see the tile up there? This is the mushroom map. <laughs> the person who made this is showing you where to find magic mushrooms. This is a small, very, very niche SaaS application. Um, it's super interesting. And it's working. It's working because they're making something for a very 
you know, defined group of people. <laughs> it's difficult to find this information anywhere else. It doesn't even matter if it's correct. It's better than anything else out there. I don't know. That's my guess. <laughs> and, and it's working. Look, a season pass to the mushroom map. Of course you need a season pass because there's seasons for mushrooms. Makes perfect sense. If I was looking for magic mushrooms, nine pounds, I'm in. That's a good deal. And I'd, if it worked, I'd come back next year. My point with this, I'm not saying go out and make mushroom maps, or, but I'm saying that, look, it's working. You know, it, it's happening. It's a very small SASH product. You guys are builders. You have access to the tools. You have access to the data. Where is the edible plants at? I don't know. I'm really into, into bow hunting. Where is the red deer app in New Zealand? You could do this. You could make this kind of stuff. You know, where, where are the flowers blooming app? And it sounds stupid, right? Because you're all about making these big enterprise solutions and solving real world problems. Well, I'm telling you, if you're looking for magic mushrooms, that's a real world problem. And you could do it. You could solve it. It's all a bit tongue in cheek. I realize that. But I, I hope you understand the point here. <laughs> this. <laughs> This is incredible. Um, it's incredible because it's built on these, the, you can see the titles up there. Can I see I can hardly ever see them down here. But can you see those keywords at the top there? My location, driving directions, US map, satellite view. This, this thing here, what this website does is a whole bunch of very, very small tools. Okay, it might, like um, a radius tool. Click on this and show me the radius of, you know, around this area of 200 meters, 300 meters. And you're all thinking, that's dumb. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, there's so many searches for these, these stupid little niche questions. Um, this site here, click. That's what the traffic looks like. So this is an estimation of, of what the traffic looks like. If I run my same site through this, it underestimates the traffic by a factor of four or five. So this is, might be what the traffic looks like. Seven million visitors a month. That's a lot of traffic. That's a lot of attention. Um, oh, I'm flicking back here because in my notes, it said, like, so I'm testing programmatic ads on my website just to see what it'll be like. Can I make some money? Like, can this help fund what I'm doing? This website here, according to you know, my research, uh, every month is making 37,000 New Zealand dollars. Do you know how much maintenance goes into this website? None. None, zero maintenance, $37,000. I'm not saying everyone here can do this, but if you could do a fraction of this, you could fund that next project that you're working on. You know, you don't have to wait to be picked. You don't have to worry about sponsorship. That this thing, you could build something like this tomorrow and it'll be there, to, you know, it'll be there the next day and the day after and the day after that. This thing here is creating a life for someone, a life for someone like us, a life for someone who knows how to use these tools and connects the dots and can make the data and understands how to get attention. Uh, I think it's a, I'm blown away by stuff like this. It's so simple. There's, a lot of this stuff is all done in the browser. There's no round trips to the server. There's no like processing, heavy processing thing. It's a, a leaflet front end or a Google whatever and answers a very specific question. And the great thing about tools like this is they are evergreen. If you have a problem with your GPS data and converting it to blah, blah, blah today, you might have the same problem tomorrow. You know, you'll come back. You'll tell the others. The idea will spread. Interesting, I think, anyway. Free map tools. See those ads on the side there? Again, it's the same idea. Very, very, very niche tools, all run in the browser. No complicated back end. It's possibly the shittiest website on the internet. Look at it. Like, I'm not a designer, but I could do better than that. You know? Niche, niche tools. Half of the, go to this website and check it out. Half of them don't work. It says on it, I don't work anymore. And yet, millions of people show up ev every month. And again, and, you know, if we go after these estimates here and from my own personal experience with programmatic ads, these ads that you can see here that just pop up, um, what are we looking at? One and a half million visits a month. Half the website doesn't work. <laughs> and a very, very rough sort of estimate based on another estimate here. And remember, this tool here is called Ubersuggest. It's an SEO research tool. It says, its best guess is, what are we talking like? You know, a million and a half visits a month. If I point that same tool at my website, dramatically underestimates the traffic. It wouldn't surprise me at all if this thing is getting four times that traffic. At this traffic volume, my guess is, 
we're making about seven thousand New Zealand dollars each and every month for doing nothing. None of the things. There is no maintenance here. There is no blog posts that need to be updated. It's a bunch of tools. Most of them are shit. And you know, I realize I'm being a little bit dramatic, but I really want you to understand this. You don't have to wait for sponsorship. Some of these projects that you're working on, some of the tools that you're building, some of the ideas that you have in your head, you could implement this stuff. None of it's get rich quick. If you do have a good get rich quick idea, I'd really like to hear about it. Um, content creation. Uh, I've got five minutes left to go. I did a, a um, podcast episode with a guy a wee while ago. He's doing content creation. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, it's basically faceless. He's just talking people how through to do stuff in QGIS. Very specific things. Okay? And he makes $400 a month off his YouTube channel. Just comes in each and every month. There is no stop to that. And then he takes that video, runs it through ChatGPT, creates a blog post out of it. He gets traffic to his website. On his website, the conversion, the ad conversion is high. He makes more money. He's making $800 a month off his website each and every month. He takes that again and sends it to his um, uh, to to a, some online courses that he's got, and that makes five, six, eight hundred dollars a month, depending on the month. You can listen to it there. That that website, my website. Side hustle ideas. It's a again. I run over a few more of these things. The idea is not to give you a recipe that's going to work for you. It's just to sort of get you thinking. Um, iron laws <laughs> of geospatial side hustles. I like the idea of creating iron laws. The first rule of iron laws is you can make your own. The second rule is short. And the third rule is ignore all of the nuance. You want it to be memorable. <laughs> so just, yeah. just go for it. Um, what have we got here? It's harder than you think. You should do it anyway. Every project is harder than you think. You're going to run into stuff. Don't overthink it. Just give it a go. If you're interested, you'll learn a ton along the way. That's the worst thing that can happen. Uh, people only pay for what they really care about, so find something that they care about and then make that thing for them. Uh, making the thing is not even half the battle. You've got to market it. You've got to be an advocate for it. You've got to figure out this marketing thing here. It's, it's super important. Um, make something for someone, not for everyone. It's a total mistake. You'll drown in the noise. Uh, ideas uh, that win are the ones that spread. Think about how you can make your idea shareable. What is it? Like, What is that, that shareable component of the idea? And if you don't have one, build one. Go and make it. Like, Have a download button where I can download an exciting gift that I can post on social media. How are the others going to spread the word? Go to a website. It's called uh, The True Size. Again, millions and millions of visitors a year. There's no, there's no SEO focus on it. There's no writing on there. It's a website where you so type in Greenland, you take the polygon of Greenland and you move it around and you see how the Makeda format or the Makeda projection distorts the thing. It's a content creation platform. People are going there spending hours and hours and hours seeing how many Greenlands they can fit inside America. And then they're taking a screenshot of that and posting on social media. That thing, <laughs> you know, if you put ads on there, you'd be, you'd be set. You don't have to work again. But have a look at it. It's viral. It's exciting. It's memorable. It's worth sharing. And you need an unfair advantage. You have an unfair advantage. You know maps. <laughs> you know data. And you have access to the tools. And you're probably interested in something. You're interested in surfing. Go make something for surfers. Um, race to the top, not to the bottom. You should be thinking about how you can charge more, not less. Uh, no one knows anything, including myself. What worked for these people might not necessarily work for you. You should try and just do something. Try and figure it out yourself. Look at these things as like a blueprint, not like the absolute way of doing things. Find something that is working and copy-paste it into your niche. So all of these things are working here. Go and find a niche that you care about and apply some of the same ideas. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And we have time for questions because you've been amazing in time. So that's another of your <laughs> many hustles, being in time. So question. There. Microphones. There we are. Fantastic talk. I think I saw a lot of people taking notes. There's a lot of interest in uh, extra bit of money, I'm sure. On that, in that context, does your podcast make money? How does it make money? Does it make money at all? Yeah, it oh, does. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you have ads? Is it? What, what, how would you? Yeah. How do you monetize? How do I make money? Uh, well, I mean, not specifically, but no, how do you no, monetize? I, I can uh, tell you specifically. I mean, it is interesting, but it, it, specifically for a podcast, how do you monetize what's effectively an interview? Um, informational interview platform? 
Well, I, I charge companies. So if you're a big company and you come to me and say, look, I'd like to be on your podcast, I say, that sounds amazing. I'm happy to work with you. It's gonna, you're going to pay for the cost of producing it and promoting it. And then think about advertising as like someone's paying for, to interrupt you guys for 30 seconds. It's a message you weren't expecting, you didn't want, and you, you might not care about. And, and that's the way advertising works. It's interrupting you. Why not make something somebody's going to care about and just engage the company directly and say, why don't you just pay me? I don't have to interrupt you. We get to work together. We make something that people care about. And at the start of those episodes, I say, this company didn't have to, but they did. They, they, paid, they helped cover the cost of producing this thing. They are supporting the podcast. They help making this thing for you. And as long as you're upfront about it, it's a significantly better business model. I make more money doing it, and I interrupt you less. That's how I do it. I also offer sponsorships on the website. Some people, there's a decent amount of traffic to a website, so that's a good thing. And uh, sometimes we do other stuff as well, like provide content to people, and there's different, there's different ideas. Look, with all of this stuff, you're going you're gonna to go out there and you're like, how can I do it? How's other people doing it? That, that is an amazing starting place, but don't get trapped into this doing the standard stuff. Who cares what the standard is? If you can do it better, if you've got another idea, if you can sell it for more, do that. People come to me all the time and say, I want to be on your podcast. We're not paying for media. Great. This is not for you. That's it. Like, it's not for you then. Because I'm only interested in working for people that, that want to believe it enough that are prepared to pay for it. And, you know, if it's not for them, it's not for them. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Thank you so much. Unfortunately,